And uh, what we do, we start with some serious news. Uh, Major League Baseball, Trevor Bauer. He gets a major win in court today, Fred. Basically, the judge denied the request by the woman who asked for a restraining order. Yeah. A five-year restraining order that she wanted to keep Trevor Bauer away from her. Uh, The judge basically said that there wasn't enough for her to issue it. And it it is a victory for him. Uh, Not that this is all over, but it's a victory in this case, okay? Because they fought against this restraining order. And Fred, you've been covering the story in L.A. Uh, You know some great details. Give me some insight on on more into this and what this means for Trevor. All right, well, let's start with this. Uh, The woman in question filed a temporary restraining order. She wanted the order to be permanent. And it came after she had two sexual encounters with Trevor Bauer. Now, both both say they were rough, and both at one point had said they were consensual. This became a very troubling story when she or her representatives released pictures of her after their second encounter, well, and they were Fred, online. Fred, they were so gruesome. Right. I mean, she was basically beaten to a pulp. Uh, her eyes were black and blue. Uh, according to the story, she was punched in the butt. She was punched uh, in other female sexual areas. Uh, and so this came down to this. Trevor Bauer said it was consensual. And the woman said, yeah, it was consensual, but it went too far. I'm afraid for my safety. So I want the restraining order continued. They go to court. Now, this was not a, a criminal trial today. Not at all. Not, not at all. But it played out like one because attorneys called witnesses. People testified. Trevor Bauer took the stand but said, I'm invoking my Fifth Amendment right because anything he said in this trial then could be used if there was a criminal trial. Yes. Keep keep this in mind. The Pasadena police and MLB are still investigating. When it was all said and done, the judge basically said it was a slippery slope, but that the woman, given the evidence, pursued Trevor Bauer. It wasn't Trevor Bauer pursuing the woman. Therefore, they would not continue that restraining order. That's all we learned today. That was it. Nothing more. Now, police investigation is continuing, and MLB is conducting its own investigation. And remember this, the MLB investigation can go very differently than the police investigation. Remember, right, people need to understand that it's not the same threshold as a case, Fred, right, with the police or uh, 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 charges or whatever. Right. It's 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 a it's a uh, you know, you, you have to be able to they can say to you, even without a conviction or without charges, that your behavior, your character does not line up with what they want in Major League Baseball and sports. We've seen it in the NFL. Guys have gotten suspended Uh, even though there haven't been charges filed against them. Right. So Trevor Bauer remains on administrative leave. What does that mean? He's getting paid as these investigations continue. I wondered for some time, with the pictures as gruesome as they were, and accounts that he choked her out with her own hair and then continued to have sex with her, uh, why wasn't he arrested for domestic violence? But there's a reason he hasn't been arrested yet. This woman in question has a history with other players, She named in court Fernando Tatis Jr. and Mike Clevenger, so she has been intimate with them. She was a member of something called the Pod Squad in San Diego. After her relationships with the players, she was fired from that position. Here's the thing you have to keep in mind now, and it's very important. MLB and the Players Association, they have negotiated contract language to handle a situation like this. Now, let me give you what MLB says, Rob. Let me give it to you, right out of their domestic violence policy. Sexual assault refers to a range of behaviors, including a completed non-sexual sex act, an attempted non-consensual sex act, and or non-consensual sexual contact. Lack of consent is inferred, that's important, when a person uses force, harassment, threat of force, threat of adverse personnel or disciplinary action, or other coercion, this is important. Yes, it is. Or when the victim is asleep, incapacitated, unconscious, or legally incapable of consent. And that's what this is going to come down to. That's the hook there. there. Right. There's the hook, Fred. 
That's why Trevor Bauer isn't out of hot water with Major League Baseball. You just right. said it. There it is. And she's saying, yeah, uh, you know, I've said this to Chris before. It's kind of like, Fred, you join a fraternity and you know hazing is, is involved. Am yes. I right? You yep. know it. You sign up for it. Can hazing go out of bounds and, and get deadly or somebody be seriously hurt? Absolutely. And that's where the line is crossed. Like, like that's the difference. So she could have said, yeah, I want it rough. And then it can go a different way where you didn't want it. So this is going to be very interesting. But the question, Fred, that I have to you is, okay, I still don't believe that he'll pitch for the Dodgers again. I, I, I don't. And it doesn't matter if there's charges or a case or anything. I think once the cat is out of the bag about how he gets down in his personal life, that might not be good enough for the Dodgers to want that guy to wear their uniform, to explain it, or for teammates to feel comfortable with that guy. Well, I think the teammates is a valid point. Because when they go into that clubhouse, those teammates have significant others, girlfriends or wives. And do you think when one of them goes home and says, well, look, uh, he wasn't really charged with anything, so they're going to bring him back, any of those women are going to say, that's okay, that's a, I want you to associate with that guy. No. And I look at it like this, Rob. You know, I have a lot of kids um, because I'm very prolific. But yes. I have two daughters or amongst cheap. my children. Well, that's another story. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> and I wonder this. If I took my daughters to Dodger Stadium and they announced, and starting on the mound is Trevor Bauer, are they going to stand and give a standing ovation for the Dodger pitcher that day, or, or will are they, they going boo? to be disgusted? Right, and and that that's the that's the issue that you have. And I want to give you one other com, uh, comparison, or or uh, is, is the Donald Sterling who owned the L.A. Clippers, Fred? Yep. And you know the story very well. He's on a private conversation. Uh, he was taped by his side piece, right? She leaked the tape. We heard on the tape him use the N-word, talking about black players in the league or whatever. What Magic happened Johnson. To, right. What, ha- what happened to Donald Sterling? Banned for life. And forced to sell, correct? Did he break any laws, Fred? No, he really didn't. He didn't break any laws. You could, you could say whatever you want. He didn't break any laws. It wasn't a criminal case. There was nothing. But once that got out in the public and people heard him talk the way he did, it poisoned him, correct? Yes. And I think that's where we are with Trevor Bauer. I, I, I'm interested to hear, uh, he wins round one, there's still a, lo- a long way to go in this, but once you find out how somebody does things on their own personal time, does that matter to you? Does it cloud the situation? Can you imagine people at Dodger Stadium cheering him? What if he goes on the road, Fred, and other teams, and parents have to explain to the kids, why are they booing that guy? He didn't even pitch. Throw a pitch, Dad. He didn't even pitch yet. You know, everybody has a right to work. Everybody. Everybody has that opportunity. It just comes down to, do you want that person to work for you? Right. That That's really what this comes down to. Uh, because if he doesn't pitch another game for the Dodgers, I don't think he'll pitch this year no matter what. I, I agree. But I he think he'll pitch, pitch somewhere day, else. I, yeah, I do if, believe he, that. if he doesn't pitch, would you be the team to sign him? Right. But other guys who have had bad things, have done bad things, Fred, have gotten second opportunities. So I do True. believe that. I know people want to chime in. We've talked about Trevor Bauer. Could you cheer the guy or do you, would you want him on your local baseball team playing in your city. Rob, the bottom line is this. We don't know what people do behind closed doors. We have no idea. No, unless it gets exposed. You're right. Right. I mean, I have no idea what your kink is. No, no. And and the same here. Well, yeah. You Look at me. You know how kinky I am. But the bottom line is... <laughs> I'm a woman! No, that, that, that's not necessary. Let's not go there. Uh, the, the, the deal is this. Once you find out about something, are you hesitant? If you're running a business... And you don't know anything about Trevor Bauer's proclivities, and he seems like a good employee. Great. If you find out about it, then do you have to draw the line and go, 
you're not the kind of guy that we want working here. We're right. not saying you're denied the chance to ever work again. Right. You just we just don't want you to work here. Right. Yeah. You're not you're not banned from the game like you could never pitch again. Right. But everybody has a different uh, set of standards. And the Dodgers are a different organization. Some other team might say, we need pitching, and we don't care. We're going to take him regardless and give him a second chance. So, and, and that team that decides to sign him then comes out and says, all right, you know, he, they investigated, and there were no charges filed. We're going to be the team to give him that opportunity. It's just, can the Dodgers in Los Angeles give him that opportunity? A marquee franchise... Uh, really, one of the marquee franchises in American sports. And all of sports. There's no doubt about it. There's, Fred, no doubt about it. The Dodgers are different from a lot of teams. And, and some teams will be like, they'll be willing to do it, but I'm not so sure the Dodgers will. Well, let's, I know we got some calls. You ready, Fred? Yeah, let's oh, okay. do it, Rob. Okay, I, I got them here. Let's do that. Uh, let's start with uh, Josh in Pittsburgh. Josh, you're on the Odd Couple, Fox Sports Radio. What you got? First and foremost, Rob, it's it's awesome to talk to you, man. I'm a huge fan of yours. Uh, you Thank know, back you. When you were with ES- when you were with ESPN, I'm not brown nosing, but you're one of the most underrated sports guys on the radio, man. I just want to let you know that I love I love the show. Well, that's um, nice you, you said that, but that was kind of brown nosing. No, that's okay. That, so, that was kind of brown nosing. You know what, Josh? That's very nice. I appreciate it. Yeah, you're welcome, man. And and obviously, I'm in Pittsburgh, so maybe I'm being a little bit of a homer here, but I kind of I kind of want to correlate this Trevor Bauer situation to Ben Roethlisberger. You know, if you think back to when his whole situation happened, you know, be it 15 years ago, or however long ago it was, you know, social media wasn't as as prevalent as it is today. Um, but you know, I'm a huge fan. I go to all the games. I have season tickets. You know, I go to on on the road. You know, I've been to Baltimore, Cincinnati, Cleveland, wherever it is. And you know, you still hear Ben's a rapist. You know, Ben big big rape. You know, you hear it everywhere you go. He was never found guilty. Um, they settled it outside of court, but unfortunately, in today's world and cancel culture and and the world that we live in. You know, it's guilty before proven innocent, and in the court of public opinion, a lot of times that's what matters, especially to these billion-dollar franchises. You know, but, how much but, Josh, but Josh, can I give you one thing? Just one thing, and I hear your point. It's well taken. Do the pictures change things for you? When do you know what I mean? It was like the Ray Rice thing. The the, the temperature on Ray Rice changed when you saw the video. Is that not true? The Ray Rice situation with the video, that was something where... Remember, no, he got two games. He got originally two games before right. we saw the video. Well, well, when he yeah, when he punched her, obviously that was a situation where, you know, it was clear and evident and the evidence... No, was but, no but, I, but, but I'm just... I, I, thanks, Josh, for the call. Fred, you know what I'm saying. Once you have video and you can see for yourself, like those pictures, they stick with you. That's you, all I'm you saying. You can't unsee something you like that. You can't unsee it. You can't unsee it. All right, let's go, Jerome and Charleston. Thanks for holding. You're on Fox Sports Radio, The Odd Couple. What you got? Bingo, Ray Rice, black player, beat up a black woman, career over with. Trouble bar, beat up a woman. I don't know what she looks like. And you want to like? He got a chance to have a career somewhere else? Hell no. What part of hell no do you not understand? Hey, Jerome, I don't want this guy near my clubhouse. Well, no, that I agree with. That I agree with. But with Ray Rice, and thanks for the call, with Ray Rice, remember this, that you cannot unsee that video, but he was at the tail end of his career. Yeah. Yeah, and if and it, it would have been interesting to see what happened if he was a star player right. in the middle of his career, Fred. That that's that's fair because he was at the end. Let's squeeze one more in, Fred. All right, let's go, uh, Steve in Tennessee. You're on Fox Sports Radio, The Odd Couple. What you got? Hey guys, thanks for having me. Yes, sir. Hey, uh, I- I live in Tennessee now, but I grew up outside Boston. I'm a Red Sox fan 45 years. I would not want this guy anywhere near my team, not specifically, you know, depending on where he is in his career or anything like that. And my team needs pitching. Definitely needs right. pitching. You guys know that. Yes. But I got daughters. You know what I mean? And when you guys talked about what are you, what are you supposed to tell your daughters when, when you go to a game and you see this guy start pitching and they announce him and stuff like that. And here's the other thing. The difference between him and Ray Rice is Ray Rice – got into a fist fight, basically, that he started with that woman. If this thing with Trevor Bauer is she asked him to be aggressive or they were doing some sadist, masochist right. kind of stuff, that's one thing. But 
like he you have to have something in you you have to have a level a level of of uh, violence and and aggression in you to be able to do something like that to somebody if i got with a woman and she's like hey i like to be aggressive smack me around a little bit i'm like nah i'm good thanks anyway no, I, you know what i'm I saying what you i mean. just yeah you know what and and your your call is is well taken steve uh steve because that's what a lot of people, Fred, you know that, won't be able to shake. You know what I mean? Like, like it's one thing that somebody asked you to be aggressive, but she's saying she was unconscious and he beat her to a pulp. Like, yeah, I, and it, here's the other thing. Rob, I want you to come up here and hit me with a bat. I want you to do it. I'm telling you, I want you to do it. And you know I wouldn't do it. Right. Of course I couldn't you wouldn't do it. Do it. I'm not right. I'm, I'm not built that way. Right. That's what I'm saying. And that's yeah. why... He would have a, a tough time with some people in a building, an organization. You don't know who's running, you know, who could be uh, very religious. You know what I mean, Fred? There's all kinds of other things that, that fall into it to say, how could anybody do that even if somebody asked them to do it? Absolutely.